It's giving me a few problems when it comes to the wrap. But the paint's actually peeling off or the lacquer's peeling off. I can't wrap over that. I just love this car in black. So a lot of you are probably thinking I'm about to turn around and say I'm flaking on the wrap. guys now some of you are probably fed up of hearing this by now but when we hit 1000 subscribers we're going to be vinyl wrapping my mark 6 fiesta st ignore the crash damage mark 7 for now we'll get onto that in a future video now we've done a lot of tidied up jobs on this car and also quite a few aesthetic mods as well we fitted these trc side skirt extensions and rear bumper spats we've also got the trc front splitter we've painted and polished the headlights we've got the black sun strip we've got the wind deflectors the gloss black grills and plastics and we've also got the diffuser fins but after all that it's given me a few problems when it comes to the wrap now the first problem is that i'm absolutely falling in love with the way this car looks. I, I bought a black one of these purposely because I wanted to vinyl wrap it. That was the plan all along. And as a rule, I don't really like black cars because I feel like the dark color kind of hides some of the body lines. Like, that's another reason I'm not a fan of black wheels. I know I now have two black Fiestas, one of which has black wheels, but we'll get onto that another time. But yeah, basically the plan was always to wrap this car. It wasn't to keep it black because I'm just not normally a fan of it. But since we completed the TRC low line kit with the side skirt extensions and the rear spats and the way that they go with the diffuser fins and all the gloss black plastics and the headlights and all that sort of stuff, like I just love this car in black. I love the sort of, not all black, but the mostly black look. I'm definitely not gonna be going black with the alloys because I really like the contrast there. I really don't like black alloys, like that is one thing. Like we'll definitely be changing that on the Mark 7, I think, and you know, I, I'm highly unlikely to have any black alloys on any car. But I do have a plan for these wheels. We're actually gonna be refurbing them pretty soon. But I know a lot of you are excited for the wrap because so many of you have been messaging me on Instagram and commenting and asking what color it's gonna be and when I'm gonna be doing it and when the video is gonna be out and all that sort of stuff. So a lot of you are probably thinking I'm about to turn around and say I'm flaking on the wrap. And flaking is precisely the other problem that I've got with doing the wrap it's not a case of me flaking it's actually a case of all the paint on the bumpers flaking the rear bumper is really bad there's a lot of cracking in the lacquer and there's some spots where the paint is just so badly cracked and i think around here as well we've got a big patch where the paint's actually peeling off or the lacquer's peeling off and it's pretty much the same story on the front bumper. You guys have probably seen this plenty of times from like when we've done the headlights and the plastics and the splitter and everything else. I mean, you can't have missed this and this has been on the car since I got it. It's really bad here as well. So basically, I can't wrap over that. Because this is gonna be our first time wrapping a car, there's definitely gonna be a lot of trial and error involved, which is gonna mean there's a lot of peeling the wrap up and trying to lay it you know, multiple times before we get it right. So the problem we've got is if you try and lay wrap over that and then you lift it, it's just gonna pull that lacquer and paint and all that stuff off, and it's gonna be stuck to the wrap. And then if you do eventually manage to get it laid, it's just gonna look so uneven. There's gonna be lumps and things like that under it. And there's gonna be gaps where you've pulled the lacquer off. So it is just not gonna fly. So you're not doing the wrap then? Yes, we're still gonna be wrapping the car, but it just means there's a little bit of prep to do first. And just to prove I'm not lying about that, here is the wrap. The wrap has already arrived. So let's take a look at what color we're gonna be wrapping the car. Come on, you didn't think I was actually gonna show you the color that I've chosen, did you? There's only one way you're gonna find out what color we're gonna wrap this car, and that is when we hit 1,000 subscribers and the car gets wrapped. So if you're already a subscriber, and you know someone that maybe would be interested in my videos or might like to see me wrap this car, then share the video, get them to subscribe, and then we can wrap this thing a lot sooner. That being said, the video won't be out straight away like the second we hit 1,000 subscribers, because let's face it, at this point when we're filming this video, we're something like 35 subscribers away, something like that. And the car's still black. You don't just wrap a car like that. It's quite a process. It takes quite a long time, especially with a DIY job. And it's the first time we've ever done it. So it is going to take a little bit. So, you know, if it doesn't come out the day I hit a thousand subscribers, then sorry, but just disclaimer, that's not going to happen. But before we can do it, we need to prep the paint. So today I'm going to be sanding down these bumpers, not the whole thing, but especially in these places where all the damage is. And I mean, it's pretty much on this rear bumper. It's all the way across here. The paint's cracked and chipped and flaking off so there is quite a lot of prep work to do so I'm going to be sanding those down giving them some primer I'm hoping they won't need like filling or anything like that it doesn't seem like there's any holes or any nasty little bits like that it's just going to be a case of getting them nice and smooth hitting them with some primer some black if I can get hold of the right color it doesn't really matter because we're going to be wrapping it but I would like to have the panther black paint on there if I can and then we'll hit it with some clear coat and hopefully get a nice finish on here it definitely won't be factory finish it definitely won't even be 
show worthy or anything like that. I don't think I can get that sort of job done, especially not on plastic, but I do think we'll get a decent finish and hopefully it'll be a good surface to wrap over. Also, if you saw my video where we de-wipered the car, you probably noticed this horrible little patch of rust here on the top of the boot, just below the glass. Now, I am going to be sanding this back and treating this rust. I'm kind of worried that the rust made its way up under here, so it's behind the glass, you know, eating away at the metal, but I haven't really got the facilities or the time or the contacts or any of that to know how to remove this glass safely because this is again going back to the black theme this is factory tinted glass it's not been tinted with a film or anything like that like this is just how it came and I think it would be really hard to get a replacement and I don't know if anyone would be able to take the glass out so that I could do the rust repair paint it and then put the glass back in I'm not sure if this would get damaged taking it out I really don't know I mean maybe let me know in the comments but I really don't think that that's the route I'm going to go down to to start with because to be fair that panel it's literally just just this small panel here hopefully we'll have enough wrap left over that if this ever does lift or bubble sorry in the future and you know damage the wrap or you know the metal underneath just starts rusting through again and we start to notice that through the wrap hopefully i could just get a new tailgate you know hopefully with the black glass we'll see but then you know we can just rewrap that because i'll keep any that i've got left over if we've got any because i think i've bought enough but you never know when mistakes are going to happen especially not with the first time but anyway for today let's get on with prepping rear bumper front bumper and that little patch of rust as well so i'm going to start sanding this area down with some 180 grit sandpaper just to try and remove as much of the sort of flaky stuff as i can and then later on we'll go up to a bit of a finer grit and then hopefully smooth this out ready for paint Okay, so I've been sanding for a little while now and I think I've got most of the spots pretty much smooth to the touch. So I haven't really gone after any of the scratches and stuff that you can't really like feel, but like these areas here, you could really feel the difference in the layers of the paint where it like cracked and peeled away and everything. So that's all nice and smooth now. There was a massive patch all the way along here that you could just feel. So that's now nice and smooth. Little patch here as well. And there was a couple of like really small things like this where I don't know whether that got like dented or something like that, but that again is nice and smooth now. Now the only area where I'm really having a problem, and I think I don't think it's too much of a problem. I think I'll be able to get there is is up here. I don't know if you saw it earlier if it came across on camera, but you can still see like obviously there's like the the side to side scratches where I've been sanding, but these kind of curved scratches here that you can see that go all the way along there, they're actually like cracks in the paint. So it was it was really noticeable before before I started sanding. You can't see them as badly now, but yeah, all of those are like literally cracks in the paint. So I think I'm gonna have to go quite deep. I'm gonna have to keep going with that bit. That's not quite uh, ready yet. So I'm gonna crack on with that. And then once I've got that to uh, a finish that I'm happy with, I'm then gonna go over all of it again with a higher grit. So I think the next one I've got up is like a 380 and I might have to get some ever so slightly finer um, just to really finish that off ready for primer. And then we can start painting the bumper. Also, just to let you know, I am wearing a respirator to do the sanding and I'll be wearing one for doing the painting as well, just because I realized at the start of the video, you could see me sort of start sanding this bumper without that on, but that was literally just to start the video. I am wearing a respirator. Okay, so I've got these bits back to a state that I'm quite happy with now. So I sanded them back quite a way as you can see i think we've gone back to the plastic on this one because the crack in here was really bad so they're really smooth to the touch now and i've actually been over everything with the 320 grit as well as the 180 that we started with so like everything is pretty much smooth now like i can't feel any difference in the levels of some of this paint so i'm hoping that that's going to be good enough for the primer i've also done this little patch here uh, with both grades of sandpaper as well. So that's all nice and smooth. So yeah, the rear bumper is pretty much ready for primer now. But before we do that, we've got to address this patch of rust on the boot because this is really bad and this is just going to get worse and worse and worse, especially if we wrap over it and water collects in underneath. So I'm just going to, same process as before, I'm going to start sanding this down with some 180 grit sandpaper. Hopefully get it as smooth as I can. Then I'm actually going to treat the rust. I've got some 
some rust reformer kind of stuff. We're gonna use that on there, get it nice and smooth, and then hopefully get a nice coat of paint over this and stop it from getting any worse in the future. Okay, so that's pretty much all of that sanded, if we can focus on it. To be fair, I've actually managed to scratch most of the rust off. You can still see a little bit on there. There we go, now the camera's focused. So you can still see where it was sort of mainly concentrated in this area here, but there was also another little patch I uncovered over here. So what I've done is I've made sure I've gone, you know, a good amount either side. I might even go a little bit further on this side just to make sure I really get past all that rust and isolate it. And then we're gonna use, like I said before, some sort of rust reformer. I've got some in my shed to just treat that area before we prime and paint it. So I'm gonna give this a quick wipe down with some panel prep. And then I've got some Loctite rust remedy, which I'm just gonna brush on to that area and try and get it as deep in there as I can. Make sure we get all the rust. Just make sure that's treated, hopefully. I'll wipe off the excess that gets on the uh, on the rear windscreen, but I really want to try and get that rust remedy right up in there. And you could already see the chemical reaction starting to take place where that sort of stuff's going a little bit purpley colored. It's kind of blue when you put it on anyway. You can see it there on like the normal paint. And then it says after about 15 minutes, this should turn like a matte black kind of color to let us know that the conversion has totally finished. And then we can sand it back if needs be, but I don't think we'll need to because I've got it pretty smooth. And then we can prime it. Okay, so I've gone ahead and masked everything up and I've given this a very light sand with the finest grit sandpaper that I've got just to make sure it's nice and smooth. And then I've given it some of that panel prep and just wiped it down and now it's ready to paint. So I just wanna show you this little trick. I actually got this from watching Chris Fix. So rather than just putting tape all the way around, I've actually gone with some little bits of paper folded back on themselves. So what that does is it stops us having like a hard tape line so you don't have to have one solid line and it lets us sort of feather the paint in a little bit more. So we'll see how that goes. I've never actually used this technique before, but it'd be interesting to see if it works. So let's get on with painting and start with our first coat of primer. Okay, there we go. So that's the third coat of primer and I think that's gonna do it for the primer for now. I'm gonna do probably about three or four coats of base as well, but I'm gonna wait a little while for this to dry off because I do wanna sand it back just a little bit. And I'm also gonna move this like folded over paper stuff like out a bit wider so we kind of feather in a bit better and make sure we cover everything. And then eventually we'll move it out even wider when we do the clear coat. But I'm gonna leave that until probably a bit later on or maybe even tomorrow. Uh, so I'll catch up with you then. Okay, so this has had a little bit of time to dry. It's probably had about an hour at this point. Um, I'm just going to give it a really light sand just to smooth it all out with some 600 grit sandpaper. So hopefully this will just make it nice and smooth, ready for us to spray the base coat. And I'm also sanding into the factory paint as well, just to help feather it in. So I'm going to wipe this down with a panel prep. Then we can tape off with the folded paper again. And then we can spray our first coat of base coat. Oh, and there we go. So that is the fourth coat of base coat. And I just want to bring you in and show you this real quick. It is starting to go dark. Uh, so I do want to try and get the clear on here before that happens. So I'm not going to show you be doing the clear as well but let's just bring you in here and show you what it's looking like before we do the clear coat so yeah okay fair enough this is still wet because i've only just sprayed it but it's looking really good it looks really smooth really glossy and to be fair like i gave it 10 minutes between each coat and just before i sprayed this last coat i came out here and it was still looking just as glossy like this before so i think once the clear's on here this is going to look really good so i'll crack on with that and then once that's done it'll probably be tomorrow that i'll show you that um yeah and we'll show you what it's looking like with all the masking removed okay so it's actually been a couple of days i wanted to give this plenty of time to cure now i thought i went quite light with a clear coat but it looks like i've got quite a few runs in it must have gone a lot heavier than i thought but it's hard to see because it had all the paper and stuff on here but nevertheless, I'm gonna try and wet sand this back, get this nice and smooth, and then I'm actually gonna polish it and see if we can blend the paint in together and see what sort of result we can get. I know it doesn't matter because we're wrapping over it, but I wanted to give it a go anyway. 
I'm gonna give the whole area a quick clean with some soapy water just to get off any dirt and debris that's settled on the car over the last few days because I've still been driving this round. I'm gonna give it a quick rinse. Then I'm gonna wipe it down with a panel prep just to get rid of any wax or grease or anything like that that might be on the surface. We don't wanna rub that into the paint when we're wet sanding because that could create deep scratches and ruin the paint job. Then starting with some 600 grit sandpaper on the back of a sponge, I'm gonna wet down the surface and also wet the sandpaper. And then we're just gonna wet sand this and try and get all these runs out of the paint. At this point, I'm getting really conscious of just how long this video is actually taking. So I thought I'd just time lapse this and walk you through what I did. Basically, I just repeated the same steps as I used on the 1500 grit for the 2500 and finally for the 3000 grit. And once I was finished, this was feeling really, really smooth. Okay, so that's the wet sanding done. And oh my God, this looks awful. Wow, nah, I'm only joking. It's supposed to look like that. It's all gone quite hazy, but that's to be expected because we've literally just sanded this. So the idea now is to polish this and hopefully we can get a nice shine back on here and hopefully we'll also manage to blend this in a bit. You can still really see the line where the new paint meets the old paint and I'm really hoping that we can blend this in. So what I've picked up is some teacup. The reason I went for T-Cut, I'm not sure, I've never used this before, but the reason I went for it is because it comes in different colours depending on the colour of your car. So I'm hoping it'll help us blend this in because there's some sort of pigment or dye or something in here. I'm not quite sure exactly how it works. I'm sure someone in the comments can tell me and probably also roast me and tell me that T-Cut's rubbish, but I don't really know. I've never used it before, like I said. So I just thought we could give this a go, see if we can help blend this together. Now I started off just trying to do this by hand, rubbing in the polish and then buffing it off. But I found that after a good few attempts at this, it just wasn't working. I was getting no shine on the paintwork at all. So in the end, I decided to crack out the drill and I used the little applicator and polishing attachment that came with the headlight restoration kit that I bought that we did a little while back. And I actually got much better results with this. It still took a few passes, but after this was done, we had a really good result on here. Okay, it's actually the following day, but I just wanted to bring you out here and show you how the boot is looking. Now we've sorted out that rust spot. Now, you can just about see, well, actually, it's pretty obvious that there's a clear line around here where the color's different. I don't know if that's actually a difference between the paint I bought and the original paint, or whether it's just something to do with the process I've used, or the sanding, or the polishing, or whatever. But the main thing is, this is nice and smooth, so I'm definitely going to be able to wrap over this. The color doesn't really matter, like I said at the beginning, because we're going to be wrapping over it. So... As long as the rust is gone, this is protected and this is nice and smooth and gives a good service to the wrap to adhere to, then I am happy. And from a distance, I think it looks pretty damn good. So the next thing is to carry on with the rear bumper. So I'm actually gonna pull the bumper off and then we can get on to painting it. Okay, so I've got the bumper off the car. I didn't really wanna show you all that because you saw it like a couple of weeks ago when I did all the TRC stuff and I've roughly masked it all off. So now I'm just gonna start spraying. I haven't really masked it off, you know, too crazy because there's some quite big areas to paint. So I'm just gonna start on with some nice light coats of primer and then move on to the base coat. I'm not gonna talk you through everything. You've seen me spray plenty of times before. Let's just get it done. Okay, now the primer's dry, time some base coat. Okay, and now we're on to the third and final coat, hopefully, of base coat. I need to get this one on nice and wet so it looks as glossy as I can get it. Okay, so I actually made a little bit of a mistake, but basically what I did is while I was painting, what I tried to do was stay away from where I had the tape. I just tried to very lightly feather sort of near there, but not actually paint over it, but I still ended up with a really hard tape line now what i did to try and combat that is i removed some of the masking and i tried to sort of sand back that hard tape line a little bit with the idea that i could just clear coat over the top but that's not worked because i think because the paint was so thin there you could see the primer coming through under that so what i've done is i've just gone back in with the base coat over the top just the way it is now but stayed really far away from where i've moved the masking tape down to and the newspaper and everything so i'm hoping now that i should be able to lay clear on this and then if I do get any sort of harder clear coat lines where this is, but because it'll just be clear coat meeting clear coat from the original uh, paint on the bumper, then I'm hoping that I can just wet sand that and then polish it similar to what I did there. Because you know what? I actually think that's what happened 
here on the boot, I think this sort of lighter color here is actually the start of the primer coming through because of how close to that I was working and sanding and all that sort of stuff afterwards. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. That is fine now. I'm really happy with that, but I really want to get a better result on the bumper. I'm still learning as I go, so you have to bear with me, stuff like this. Like I say, the color doesn't really matter because the whole purpose of this is just so we've got a nice surface to wrap to. So overall, I'm not too worried about it, but I just wanted to let you guys know that I did make a little bit of a mistake with it, but hopefully I've rectified it and we'll see what happens after we've clear coated, which is what I'm going to do next. So coming in with a clear coat, I'm going to go nice and light on the first coat and then get heavier as the coats go up. I did get quite a lot of runs when I did the boot, so I'm going to go really light on the first coat and fairly light on the second coat and just see how it's looking before I eventually do a nice wet coat to finish off. We're going to be wet sanding this back and polishing it anyway, so fingers crossed we can get a really good result. Okay, so I'm just about ready to spray the final coat of clear. Hopefully I'll try and make this a nice wet coat, but fingers crossed that we don't get any runs in this. I do wanna make this nice and wet so we can get as glossy as possible. Like I say, we're gonna polish it anyway, but fingers crossed. God, I hope I get a good result on this. Okay, I've only just finished spraying, but on the first look, this is actually looking really good. You can see a kind of hazy patch in the middle here. That's because I didn't actually paint that bit. That's probably where like the overspray from the clear coat coming from the side here. I had that little patch on the side and then coming from this side as well is kind of just sort of dusted on there. So I'm hoping that will come off with polishing, but I mean, that's actually looking really good. I'm super impressed with that. I'm well happy. It looks looks really good for a diy kind of rattle can job all in all that is looking really good i'm super happy with that so i'm going to stick it back on the car once it's dry and then we'll come back in a few days once this has had a real good time to harden and fully dry and then we can give it a nice polish okay so it's been a couple of days the bumper's now back on the car and we're ready to start the wet sanding process before we can polish it now on the face of it, it's looking pretty good, but up close you can really see that there is a clear difference between the factory paint down here and this kind of duller area up here where we've painted and obviously clear coated where it's sort of come through onto the factory clear coat. But I think it will look really good once we've wet sanded this back and then given it a polish and hopefully we can get some of that shine and really blend this in together. Before we start sanding, I'm just gonna rinse the bumper down just to get off any loose bits of dust or any dirt or anything like that that may have settled on the paint because we don't want to rub that into the fresh paint while we're sanding. Then I'm going to wipe it down with the panel prep again just to make sure there's no wax or oils or anything like that on it that might contaminate the sanding process. Then I'm going to start with a 1500 grit, then 2500 grit, and finally 3000 grit. And then once the wet sanding was done, it was back on to polishing. I worked in sections, starting with the driver's side, then I did the center of the rear bumper, and then I did the passenger side. I applied the polish with the drill the same as before, and then buffed off with a microfiber towel by hand. I was actually really happy with the results of this. I thought I was going to struggle because it was such a big panel, and there was an awful lot of paint lines and things like that that showed through from when I was painting. But I'm definitely a lot happier with how the bumper came out than how the boot came out, and I'll show you that in just a second. Okay, so here we go. The bumper is done, and I'm so happy with the way this turned out. The finish I've got on this looks so good. There are some clear spots where, you know, you can see the difference between the factory paint and the old paint. In terms of a color match, like, I actually think it's really good, and I mean, look at that shine there. I do think I've polished that really well, and I've really got that blended in. Like I said, there are gonna be some places where you can see a difference, but I mean, overall, I think that looks really, really good. And I definitely think this is gonna be the perfect surface that we can wrap over because it is super smooth. I wasn't really overly fussed with how it looked, but I mean, I'm so happy that, I mean, I've painted this. I've painted this myself by hand with rattle cans and then polished it as well, just using a drill. I think that is so good for what I've used and the results I've got from doing it that way. I couldn't be happy with this. I mean, like I say, it doesn't really matter because we're gonna be wrapping over this, but it is now prepped and ready 
for the wrap. I haven't got around to doing the front bumper just yet in time for this video to go live, but I will make sure I get it done before we wrap the car. And speaking of wrapping the car, over the course of the few days that I've been filming this video, we've actually hit 1,000 subscribers. So I just want to say a massive thank you to each and every one of you, to everyone that's recently subscribed, everyone that's subscribed from day one, and everyone in between. Thank you so, so much for getting us to this point. I can't wait to get this car wrapped. I'm so excited, and it's going to be coming very soon. It won't be the next video, but it is coming very soon. But for this one, it's time to end. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.